Hi folks, Rusty with Sagacity All Stream Fabrication Engineering here with another installment in our basic tech series. Today we're going to be talking about thermocouples and RTDs, mostly in general terms. We'll do separate videos on RTDs and thermocouples in more detail. We're also going to cover thermal wells, which is the protection tube that you'll need to interface an RTD or thermocouple with your process piping. See that video next in the series. RTDs and thermocouples are used in process industries for measuring temperature. Any time you have a chemical reaction or a process that's changing from one phase to another, you need to know what's going on temperature-wise in that stream. Temperature is one of the most common measurements you'll find, and how you make that measurement, whether it's an RTD or a thermocouple, will be determined by your engineering team. We're going to talk a little bit in generality today about both of those sensors so you'll have a good idea of how to specify them and the considerations before you go talk to your engineering group. A thermocouple will have two wires out the back. An RTD will typically have three or more wires out the back. That's a good way to tell the two of them apart. A thermocouple will have a weld end and we're welding two dissimilar metals together to generate a voltage output. An RTD will typically use a resistor, platinum based resistor, to generate a resistance output in measurements done that way versus a voltage output. RTDs are usually good up to around 600 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, they tend to break down, so you'll need to use a thermocouple. Thermocouples have been used in temperatures up to thousands of degrees, and depending upon which manufacturer you use, they can point you to the right thermocouple type. When you're specifying an RTD or thermocouple, Again, keeping in mind that you'll probably interface that device with a thermal well, which we're going to cover in another video, but you will want to know how you're going to connect to that thermal well. The most common is a threaded connection. This particular one is a half inch. You may have three quarter inch, but typically you're going to thread this into your thermal well. This is your process connection as far as the RTD or thermocouple is concerned. The distance between the bottom of that and the end is your stem length or U-length and that's typically determined by the length of your thermal well. You'll notice these have two different diameters. You can have typically a quarter inch diameter or a 0.375 diameter. Again, that's going to be determined by the size of your protection tube and what you're trying to accomplish with your piping goals and safety goals for the device and how that's going to be interfaced with your existing piping scheme. In this particular case, we have a junction box in the back with a terminal strip located in there so you can land your leads. For an RTD, you typically have three or four wires. It's a non-polarographic device that typically doesn't care how you hook it up as long as you get the resistance wires connected correctly back to your transmitter. The type of wire needs to be determined by the type of your RTD. Again, the RTD manufacturer can make those recommendations. Thermocouples can be made with any type of process connection. In this particular case, this is a device that we built for a customer operating up to 5,000 pounds in pressure. This is an autoclave connection that's built into the device itself. This is an eighth inch diameter, and it goes and is bent where they need to measure temperature in their reactor. It's just an example of what you can do with these devices. So what do you need to know before you go talk to your engineering group when specifying an RTD or thermocouple? First, you'll need to know what temperature range you want to measure. Anything after 600F, thermocouple is the way to go. You'll need to know your piping and your process piping because your thermal well, which will be installed in your process by piping that your RTD or thermocouple goes into, will dictate typically dictate your stem size here and your process connection to the thermal well for your RTD or thermocouple. You'll need to know how long that thermal well is that will dictate your U-length of your measurement stem here. And then you'll need to know if you're, how you're going to interface the wiring off the back, whether you're going to have a junction box with a terminal strip inside like this one does, or if you're going to have a hockey puck transmitter, which is located on the inside, which typically takes the signal right off of the, trans, or right off of the RTD or thermocouple and transmits it back to your digital control system. 
That's it folks for temperature sensors. We hope this has been helpful. This is Rusty with Sagacity Allstream Fabrication Engineering. Be sure and like and share below so you can keep up with our tech series. There are more information coming to you in the future. If you need us, our contact information is also below. We'll help you in any way we can.